right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming, and we're really happy to have you all here. Um, I'm Katie Fike, and I'm one of the co-founders of Aging 2.0, and I'm a um, gerontologist. I have my doctorate in gerontology from University of Southern California, but in my previous life, I was an investment banker in New York, and before that, I was a systems engineer undergrad, and so what I love about the work that I get to do now is kind of trying to bring those three worlds together of business opportunities, technology, and to help the needs of older adults. And so um, when I'm not doing Aging 2.0 stuff, I'm doing um, in innovation consulting with my company called Innovate 50, and we do product and service innovation consulting for this market. And this is Steven. So quick, hi everybody, yes, so i uh, also an innovation consultant. My background is mobile technology with Nokia, um, and then uh, work mobile health consulting, and then working for a, a personalized medical research consortium into trying to find a cure for a very rare uh, uh, Alzheimer's-like dementia, um, which got me really fascinated by the opportunities for research in, in dementia and for the aging space in general. So Katie and I teamed up at the beginning of the year. We've been having events now the last six months and enjoying everyone more and more. So welcome. Oh, with Wen? Yeah, Wen. Hi, I'm, I'm Wen Dabrowski. I'm a geriatrics physician in healthcare technology. And this is Wen. This is my jacket that he wanted me to show you. Um, but basically, I Basically, I'm at the intersection of clinical medicine, technology, policy, and innovation, and just where all that intersects. Awesome. And we've also got the team like Jen Chan, and uh, who you put us on the way in, and then Heidi has been helping out as well. So I think that's it. Awesome. Great. And which is a perfect lead into thanking our hosts. Um, the Stanford Longevity is our host tonight, and we want to let Ken just get up real quick and um, tell you a little bit about this organization and all the great work they're doing. Hi, and don't worry, this isn't going to be a, a, a long talk. They gave me 60 seconds, so. Um, you only used five of them, so. I saw that somewhere else last week. Uh, so we're the, uh, for, for, I'm uh, with the Center on Longevity. I'm the director of the mobility division, and uh, I guess we've been sharing backgrounds. My background is actually, I'm an engineer, um, spent a number of years in aerospace, spent about a dozen years at uh, Intel, uh, in Intel research, and got interested in uh, working with universities and working uh, around aging and sensors and a lot of those kind of things. Um, so the Stanford Center on Longevity is ha really happy to be hosting you guys tonight. Um, we are a multidisciplinary research center um, looking to redesign long life. And we definitely are not, we, we are not the folks that are trying to get to, you to live to be 150. When you talk about a center on aging, I often say we're the center on longevity, not the center for longevity. Um, but what we are looking at is the fact that um, the, the average lifespan since uh, 1900 has gone up virtually double. And we are now seeing distributions of aging within the population that are different, you know, not only than what we've seen in the U.S. before, but essentially in all of the history of humanity. So it's a really interesting time to be working on aging. Um, we have about 140 faculty affiliates across the university in every school. So we work on, uh, we work along three divisions, actually, uh, based on the idea that if people can reach old age uh, physically fit, mentally sharp, and financially secure, that many of the problems of old age really become, really start to fade into the background and you can look at aging as a very positive experience and we are a very positive looking group. So um, we'd like, we're really interested in hearing uh, what everybody has to say. We are very much a translational research center and looking to find ways in which the research that goes on at Stanford finds its way out into, uh, uh, into the real world and actually helping people. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Find you on uh, at Long Jeffrey Center. We are, yeah, we are. <laughs> We're actually at uh, longevity.stanford.edu. Um, feel free to browse through and look at the kind of work we do. There's also, uh, for those of you who might be looking at kind of demographically how the population is aging almost from a market perspective, there's a lot of good information up there. I would definitely point you to the uh, New Realities of an Aging America report is a great place to start. Great. Great. We just wanted to give you guys a really a quick little background on Aging 2.0 and what we're doing um, and hopefully how we can help you guys as entrepreneurs and innovators in this space. Um, so kind of what brought Stephen and I together around this space was what we've started referring to as this innovation paradox. You know, there's this huge population. They have, you know, 70% of the disposable income, 33% of them are active internet users. And Yet, there's kind of this surprising lack of innovation. Um, you know, we're still seeing, you know, where are the big brands? Where are the big exits? Where are the investors? And we feel like 
there's just something locking this up, and Stephen and I wanted to understand what that was and hopefully do something about it. And we think really one of the first things that needs to happen is a shift in mindset. Um, and so that's a big part of what we're talking about with Aging 2.0 is how do we shift from kind of this Aging 1.0 mindset, which was aging as a challenge, aging as pretty healthcare focused, um, designing for the old and the elderly. I joke that we're waging a battle against big, beige, and boring. You know, that's the traditional <laughs> products that we've seen. Um, from a mission-driven, which is great, we want to shift from mission-driven up into mission-driven and business-driven. It's okay to have for-profit businesses in this space who are being rewarded for doing great and important work. Um, we want to shift from just an institutional idea, you know, the old skilled nursing model, which is still plays a role in the continuum of care, but from institutional to aging and community. And from just government and nonprofit to people like you, to entrepreneurs and innovators in this space. So we really, this is a big part of kind of what's behind everything we do with um, Aging 2.0, to think about it as an opportunity to expand beyond healthcare into wellness and lifestyle, and to really think about designing for all, as opposed to just thinking about what do old people need or want. And we have some great speakers tonight who have a real design bend, which I think will be great. So when we think about what is Aging 2.0, how are we different than some of the activity going on right now, which is really exciting around Health 2.0? And we still feel like on top of what's going on with Health 2.0, there's kind of some missing spaces that we think are particularly interesting and we want to help spawn innovation in this space. One is what we're calling connected independence, which is a big theme around both aging in place physically, but also aging in community emotionally and socially. The next is e-caregiving and kind of what tools can we create to help both family caregivers and professional caregivers um, in the important work that they're doing to keep their family members aging where they want to age in the home. And the finally one is lifestyle, um, you know, the big, beige, and boring. How can we take this 70% of disposable income and give them products they're actually excited to buy and excited to own and excited to walk down the street carrying? We think there's a lot missing in that space. And so we started Aging 2.0, and it's really molding and growing and we're trying to address the needs of people like you guys and how we can kind of accelerate innovation in this space. And um, so what it started with a blog and then it, we started doing these events and then it started doing some consulting work. But where we all see this leading hopefully is um, an accelerator and a seed fund. And so what we'd like to do, we're meeting all these great entrepreneurs around the world, is to hopefully raise the seed fund and help really meet the unique needs that we see facing entrepreneurs in this space things like attracting talent, things like marketing, things like distribution partnerships. We think there's some real things kind of locking up why we haven't seen um, some of the kickoff of innovation that we think is really needed in this space. So the events, we've been going all around the world. Um, we've done, we have our second one coming up in London. We hope to get to Asia next year. We've been doing them all around the US. Um, and we have a few more coming up soon. We have Boston and New York next week. Um, we have one in DC in November. We're doing one in London also in November. And then something exciting we're announcing is we're participating in the Engage Pavilion at the Mobile Health Summit in DC. And we've partnered with AARP and to help them, we are helping identify which startups should be highlighted in this pavilion. So we get to help, because we're meeting all you great people, we get to help say, you should highlight this one and that one and um, help bring this and give it a higher profile. So we're really excited about that. We're also very excited about our speakers for tonight. Um, so we have, the three thought leader talks, which will be roughly 15 minutes um, with five minutes for Q&A. And we have Gretchen Addy from IDEO who will be kicking things off with a presentation around designing the future of aging. Then we have Rupa, and I'm probably gonna butcher your last name. <laughs> I'll let her say it. Um, also a designer, gonna talk about designing for the human condition and as we move into the insight age. And finally, David Jaffe, who's a professor here at Stanford, talking about um, designing assistive technologies for older adults and um, individuals with disabilities. Then we'll take a little break, and then we'll get back with three pitches from three startup companies, um, Care Architecture and Sunil, CareLinks with Sherwin, and Unfrazzle with Rajiv. So we'll talk more about those after the break. And before we get started with our first speaker, we want to give a moment to our friends at Resin, who are one of the sponsors for tonight. And they're gonna come up and tell us just real quickly what they do. Hi, my name is Jeremiah Tracy. I'm a creative director and partner with Resin Advertising. I have a partner, Pascal Sabatella, in the back in the Giants shirt. Appropriate, go Giants. And Tim Paschke wearing his recent uh, something from La Playa with Burning Man thing going on. He's a design director. 
Uh, we're three partners. Our fourth partner, Trish Arslanner, could not make it tonight. Um, Resin is a new agency that's actually been in this space for over five years, so we're excited to continue to meet people who are changing the conversation, the landscape of a very maturing, no pun intended, market um, on a couple of fronts. We specifically have, have cut our teeth on um, senior independent living communities, the not-for-profit sector, Episcopal senior retirement communities here in Northern California, Episcopal retirement homes in Cincinnati, Ohio, no relation. Uh, we're doing some work with Alzheimer's with, um, with uh, Home Instead, which is based out of Omaha. They have over 600 independent franchise owners and that market's growing very fast. We've been happy to just launch a new program for a couple of their franchisee operators down here. One of the things that we do at Resin, we do it well, is we're very strategic. Um, our core competency is very strong with positioning, strategy, powerful creative key insights that lead to what we consider breakthrough work in this category. And I was mentioning earlier that it's nice to be on the forefront of a market that has for us as agency people a new venue and a new corridor and new opportunities to really do exquisite work. Now, and that involves a couple of things. One, it involves clients that we're currently seeking, which is why I'm up here. So don't be shy in terms of giving us your business card. That's an unabashed pitch, because you said it was a pitch thing. So, 60 seconds. Uh, 60 seconds. <laughs> Am I over? When's the clock? Okay. So anyway, Resin, Resin Global is our site. Uh, we do really great work. We're very collaborative. We'd like to work with anybody who's looking for strong advertising and persuasive branding. Thank you very much. We now return you to regular right. scheduled programming.